So today I'm going to be teaching you how to use three graphics programs. Hold on, why am I doing that? Well, because to learn how to make a 2D game you need to learn programming, but also if you want to do it on your own you're going to want to know programming, graphics and sound. And we will go sound in another tutorial, but today we're going to do some graphics. We're going to get out of clips and we're going to do some graphics. Awesome. I'm going to be teaching you through three graphics programs. Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, and Paint.net. This costs about a few hundred dollars, so does this, but uh, Paint.net is free. But I'm going to go through all of them, and I'm going to go through as much as I know. So, let's create a new document in Adobe Illustrator. Just a quick note, even if you, you know, have Paint.net and don't want to see me go through Illustrator and Photoshop, go through it. You're going to want to create a new document, and... Uh... I usually make it the size of my game, so let's say my game uh, has a base size of 1920 by 1080 that's what I usually do. So think about it this way, your game, uh, if you do uh, decide to do this, your game's going to run on many different screen sizes. Uh, this is definitely going to be true if you're running your game on an Android device. Um, so if you're running it on multiple resolutions, then you're gonna have to have one resolution that you design all your games in. Okay? For me, that resolution is usually 1920 by 1080 because that's usually the largest resolution uh, a person has. So 1920 by 1080. And then for all other screen sizes, I just size it down. So in libgdx, using libgdx, uh, I size the games down for any screens that are lower than that. For example, my phone has a 1280 by 720 display. So I size it down. Um, I don't have to do that manually. LibGDX does it for you. And yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and make that canvas. And so now we have our blank canvas. What do you, what do, you do now? Well, OK. So there's two types of graphics. In my, in my, in my mind, there's two types of graphics. One is like characters, uh, space, ships, um, objects, shit like that. that. That's the first type of graphics. And the second is like, you know, main menu, like buttons, uh, particles, um, text, shit like that. There's an issue here because the first kind of graphics, you know, like uh, spaceships and monsters and shit, I can't do. I'm unable to do them, so unfortunately I can't go through them. Um, so yeah, you're kind of slightly screwed, but don't worry, we'll go through 8-bit art uh, with Photoshop. So you, and I can I can do 8-bit art. Uh, so you can make your spaceships, monsters, and shit in 8-bit art. Otherwise, you're gonna have to find a graphics designer. I apologize, but uh, yeah, we've got something. But in Illustrator, I'm gonna show you how to like make main menus and shit. So like, here's the shape tool. All right, you can hold down on that, and then you get your various shapes. So star. We've even got a flare tool. Yeah. It's it's some cool shit. Alright. So we're gonna use this square. Alright, now you can move this around. Awesome. Okay. So what I do is I take this 1920 by 20 canvas. Think about it. What's my menu my main my main menu going to be like? Right, I'm gonna have three buttons. And I use control V, control C control C and control V to copy and paste those. I'm gonna have three buttons, okay? Um but I want them all to be in the middle, I want them all to be a good size, I want them all to be equal and shit. How, how would I do that? Like, can you teach me how to position shit and space shit out? Sure thing, alright, so. Usually I like to have a uh, nice round uh, width and height, so 7975, that, that's not a good number. Let's change that to 640. And same with the height, let's change that to 120. Let's do that for all of these. I really should have made one and then copy and pasted the rest, but whatever. Whatever. By 120. Awesome. Uh, how do I equally separate these apart? Put them all together. Say you want a space of, uh, say, 128. So I'd highlight these two. Transform, move. Vertical, 128. That'll move these two down 128. And then I'll do the same for this one. And it'll move it down 128. There we go. How would I center all of these then? Highlight all of them. Up here, you've got your X and your Y. 960. 540, that's the middle of 1080p. So if I get out the calculator, 920 divided by 2 is 960, so that's the midpoint horizontally. 
and tangent e divided by 2 is 540, that's the midpoint vertically. Bit confusing, maybe, depends on your ability, but whatever. Now let, let, let's give this some colour and flare. Uh, I want to make this green. Why didn't that work? That's because that's the outline colour. If you look, it did it, okay? If we go here, now I can get the inside colour. You can also double click on this and you'll get a colour picker like this, where you can put in the hex and shit like that. How would I increase the stroke? By the way, I'm using Illustrator CS6 by the way. Usually what I do, I like to have an inner stroke, so like that. So that the width so that the width and height are still the same. So if I do that Sorry, if I do that, that's how it normally is. Even though the width and height is still 640 by 120, you've still got this excess. So, if you do that, there's no excess. All right, awesome. Uh, let's put some let's put some text into it, right? So, uh, play. I know this looks awful. This is an awful looking play button. Don't judge me. Uh, we can resize this. You got your fonts here. I'm gonna put Roboto. Roboto is my favorite font. Uh, I'm gonna change to 64. That's a nice number. And I'm gonna give it the color white. I can easily do that by pressing I on my keyboard or clicking the eyedropper tool here and clicking a color I want. If I wanted white, then I just click white on a white area and it does it for me. Perfect. What if I want to center that within this? You'd have to make a new document the exact same size as the button, which is 640 by 120. And I know I'm doing too going too fast here. Alright, but I need to cover everything. Uh so now what you do is now you would get half of 640, which is 320. 640 is a width, so halfway across is 320. 320. And half of 120 is 60, so this is going to be 60. That is now centered. You can cut and paste this back, and now you have a centered version. Okay. Alright, awesome. So, one thing you might ask is, okay, so, when I'm exporting all my images, I need to do them separately, right? I, I don't just export this one big-ass image. That is true. So, again, what you just do is you just get the width and height of the separate image you want to export, put in a document the size of that, and then Control-Alt-Shift-S. Pick your format over here, and then save, and then choose a directory and all that crap. Alright, so there you go. That's a basic insight to Illustrator. So Photoshop I tend to use for pixel art. Like 8-bit, 16-bit. So I'm, I'm going to show you how to do a 16-bit uh, a character. And I'm awful at this, but I, I, can, I can do it. Okay. So that seems good. I'm going to zoom in. Alright, so now you can see we have these individually separated cells. You can get the pencil tool out, you pick your main colour here, pick blue, literally just start painting across. So this is a blue man, a very weird looking blue man. Okay, and we're good to go. Uh, you can press Control, Alt, Shift, S again. Select your uh, call, uh, your file format, and then export, blah, 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 blah. Alright, that was quick. Now let's move on to Paint.net. Paint.net, you can practically do the same shit as Photoshop, really. Paint.net, again, I use for uh, pixel art. So 16 by 16. Zoom in. It won't give you like the outlines, but they are there. So if I click on the pencil tool, it won't give you the outlines, but they are all separated. Awesome. One thing I actually want to teach you um, is you see the dirt texture on Minecraft. It's basically all you know randomly distributed colors. Really, how do they do that? Well, I'll show you how to do it in Paint on it and Photoshop. So hit the brown, fill it. Okay. I like it all. Whoops. And you're gonna want to go distort. Sorry, noise. Add noise. Uh, color saturation, you're going to want to put it down, and then just drag across the intensity, really. And there you go, you've got a nice looking dirt texture. Awesome. And then you can 
uh, just hit Control Shift S, and then you can just save this PNG image. And that story wasn't too good, but it's all the knowledge I have about graphics that I can give to you. Uh, alternative options could be getting open source art from the internet, uh, or hiring a graphics designer, uh, or again, you can try and give it a go of uh, doing graphics yourself. Uh, so. We'll get back to our normal gist of programming in the next tutorial, don't worry, and then eventually we'll move on to sound. Uh, but for now, uh, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Have a fantastically brilliant day guys, bye bye.